Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's the Alex. And today I want to give you my first impressions after a day or so of the new Hulk Fear Itself update. Uh, we didn't get to this video yesterday because Hulk Tier 4. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a little card up in the corner. You definitely got to check that out. It was absolutely wild and really fun. Uh, but I think that's the essence of this month's update. It's a fun update. We see characters who have never been in the meta finally getting their spotlight we see characters who have been gone from the meta for years a couple years like hulk returning to the meta in a new way and there are sort of new things to discover about these characters along the way along with the gore world boss legend and a couple of tweaks here and there to some existing rewards so that is all well and good the update's not perfect we will get to that but I do think overall this update is an improvement on updates recently, not only because there is more content, but there does seem to be, it's it's anecdotal and it's my opinion kind of speculation, but there does seem to be a bit more effort that was put into this update versus maybe the last uh, update or so or a couple of updates. And again, I don't want to pit updates against each other, but I'm pretty happy with this one um, and you know, I do think that most players are going to find something to be excited about here. So, talking about the characters first off, I think Hulk is going to be the biggest enigma for players because of the Tier 4 upgrade. You know, we expect the Tier 4 upgrade to be such a massive improvement that when we don't see the character blitzing through content and just deleting bars at any stage, just erasing bosses, uh, we think that it's a bad upgrade. And so Hulk is a very interesting case because unlike Storm, unlike Moon Knight, Thor, or Iron Man, like completely, you know, completely different from them, he actually has PvP value. He's the first tier four to have substantial PvP value. Now, whether he is the best PvP character in the game now, I think that's an easy no. I don't think he's the best PvP character in the game, but that's a more complicated, nuanced question, and it probably requires its own video. However, Having a character like Hulk at level 80 or tier 4 who can do the the breadth, right? Who can do as much content as he can do? Because sure, he's going to be slower than Moon Knight in basically any PvE content as a combat type, but Moon Knight can't touch PvP. Hulk's, Hulk's got his hands all over it. So I'm really happy with Hulk's upgrade, but at the same time, I think I expected a little bit more and I think other players did. So I think it's something that I'm going to need more time to gestate on and really consider. Juggernaut, on the other hand, got an amazing upgrade. I think people are gonna be really happy with his upgrade if they like Juggernaut. If you're just chasing the meta, you may not be able to see Juggernaut's value until you dig quite a bit deeper. But I do think this is a massive upgrade for a character who wasn't even that good when he came out. And this was something that I said, as a premium character who was released in 2018, the devs have a lot of ground to make up in order to make people's purchases feel worthwhile. I think they've achieved that, not only visually, aesthetically, he's got a really cool sound effect when he slams down the hammer on his fourth skill. There's just a lot going for Juggernaut uh, that I think uh, players will enjoy. As far as his uniform options, really quickly, we have Classic Thing, Rescue 3099, Drax Classic, Deadpool 30th, and then Makari. So we basically have four bad options, unless you're really into Alliance Conquest or you just like picking up broken toys like Deadpool. Uh, and then we have one amazing option. So pretty brutal for Juggernaut. Uh, they were not kind to him on his uh, options, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, as far as Titania goes, I think she is going to be the standout of this update from a meta chasing perspective. Now, people may be confused. They may think that when I say meta chasing or meta defining, I'm saying best. Doesn't mean best, right? I mean, Hulk's tier four. It's hard to, it's hard to beat that, right? But in terms of where you're going to be able to see players plug and play and, and and just oh here's her value and plug it in right away i think titania is going to rise above and be that character because of her typing right unlike hulk juggernaut and uh, absorbing man who are all in the exact same category of villain combat male she is villain female combat and now those two letters that fe in front of male makes all the difference really does thank you but not right now uh, so yeah, ABX is an easy suggestion, is an easy recommendation for Titania. But on top of that, rare female character with a good leadership and a good support passive for characters who have the strong ability. That was my sad little flex there. Uh, so yeah, I think she got a, a wonderful rework. A little bit harder to play than Juggernaut, but still satisfying in her own right. Her passives, 
or sorry, her uniform options, I should say. Green Goblin, Dark Avengers, Super Giant, Hela, Heimdall, and then we have Professor X. So much better options than Juggernaut. A couple of clunkers with Professor X and Green Goblin, but still much better, much more relevant um, overall for most players anyways. And then we come to Absorbing Man. Absorbing Man is probably going to be the one character that maybe gets labeled worst because we're humans and we have to put everything into neat little boxes but absorber man got him got a really good upgrade again i don't know i don't know how else to explain it he got a really good rework he has 25 percent chain hit damage he's super proc friendly judging by moon bros testing video i don't think he's going to be good for pvp even though he has a heal on every skill in a sneaky twist of events or turn of events that forces you to spend more gold leveling up his skills so i can i see you net marble i see i see your strategy uh, but I think he's a fantastic option for PvE. And he's a really fun character with really fun uh, animations. We have gotten quite a few combat characters lately. So, you know, for those of you looking for an answer for Mephisto, you now have so many options, right? Before it was just like Shang-Chi, if you, if you have a CTP of Rage, maybe Call Obsidian Black Dwarf, and that was it. But then we got Moon Knight, we got Blade. Now we have Zorbian, we have Juggernaut, we have Hulk. We have so many, uh, and I'm probably forgetting a couple of them, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that being said, I do think Absorbing Man uh, got a really good rework. Uh, and again, not every character can be meta-defining and at the top, right? Like there just aren't enough game modes that would have space to make way for all four of these characters. And we wouldn't necessarily want, well, I say we collectively, maybe the majority I'm speaking for, I'm not sure. Some people would like it, but I do think the majority of MFF players would not be happy if an update had four characters who were all at the top of the meta because it would feel so um it would feel like such a huge change and it would feel like there was so much pressure to adopt all four of these characters and and, and max them all out right and that much of a meta push uh, is just is just too fast right free to plays can't keep up even low spenders can't keep up in that case right you're talking about like you know almost 5000 crystals right there just on four uniforms not to mention all of the other resources so it's kind of good that we don't have four meta-defining characters in, in an odd way. But anyways, his options are Hawkeye, Captain Marvel, new one, the, the villain one, Invisible Woman Classic, X-23, and Scarlet Witch, WandaVision. Also pretty crummy options. I gotta say, this old Scarlet Witch is really a kick in the pants. Not meta anymore and over a year old. Not meta and over a year old. <sighs> Barely meta. Uh, and then Hawkeye's really good. So yeah, not the greatest optionals for this full update overall, which is weird because we've gotten so many good reworks. So I'm like wondering like where are all the rogue optional uniforms or, you know, other characters, um, even support types who, you know, their value, they're like War Machine and stuff like that. Like where, where are they as optionals? Uh, where are the Eternals as optionals? Where's Thena as an optional? I mean, I guess she's expensive, but at least she's a good character. I'm not sure where to land on that, but yeah. That's how I feel about the characters. Moving along to content, I think that the Gore World Boss Legend overall is a step in the right direction. I think it's a fun boss fight. It's definitely, it definitely feels different than all of the other boss fights. It's not as frantic and as sort of position based as Ultron. Uh, the pace of the fight, I would say, I could probably just zone into the fight to show you guys. But anyways, the pace of the fight, I feel is a lot slower which feels a lot more like Null, but it's more like a deadlier version of Null. So whereas with Mephisto, you, you have to be worried about your position relative to Mephisto. With Ultron, you're just chasing him around the arena as he zips back and forth. With Null, he sort of just slowly walks over to you and does things, and you can kind of just kite Null around. Gore is sort of like that, but he hits way harder than Null, so you have to be really careful when you're trying to position him. You can position him, it's a little bit difficult to, you know, show you guys stage mechanics because it's still a little bit of a low level for me. But with um, with uh, Gore, I think you have like a, a good mixture of sort of, it feels like Null and it feels maybe like Ultron a little bit with some of these attacks and some of these patterns. Um, but I think they struck a good balance. And there's a quite a fun sort of mini game, not mini game, but sort of like stage mechanic where if you don't do enough damage in time, and I'm actually taking too much damage by talking here, but if you don't do enough damage in time, uh, Gore will summon 
his uh, shadow monsters. And then you have to defeat the shadow monsters in order to interrupt gore. So you do have an element of strategy where you have to think about characters and use characters who have a lot of movement speed or who have really short animations on their skills so you can cancel them and get to the next mob because they're all spread out or they have really large AOE. Or if you really want the V-pad skill, there I just died. That, that's an auto kill, by the way, that kills you no matter what. Or they have a V-pad skill that allows you to target multiple enemies. So I like the gore fight. I do think some people are going to be uh, really critical of it. But I think that criticism comes from the rewards. The one issue I have with the Gore World Boss Legend is it's not uh, profitable, and it's not like. And I spent five thousand crystals to unlock it right away, and I'm one of the I'm at one of the highest stages right now for anyone for Gore because I've been able to play it ten times already. Right, I'm still rank two overall. So trust me when I tell you that it's not worth it, and that shouldn't be the case, right? That should not be the case. This is cutting edge content. This is brand new content. The devs need to understand that that they need to incentivize players to play this game mode and, and to play this boss, excuse me, not the game mode. So putting this is not good enough because this doesn't drop regularly enough, right? They need to they needed to either put a brand new resource in here like Soul of the Foul Team or they needed to add some other incentive like, hey, maybe he doesn't drop Life Seed, but he drops a lot of Carbonadium, right? I, I think the devs... And they have not fulfilled this, right? I talked about this in a previous video. They have not fulfilled this promise of segmenting the world boss legends into, into different difficulties and segmenting them into different rewards. All four world boss legends drop the same rewards. And I'll do a separate video on this, but that's the summary. They all drop the same rewards. Sure, the amounts are not exactly the same, but the devs are talking about five to 10. That's the amount of difference. And that's not different, right? And so... You can see where they've achieved this and they've had success in something like GBR. So they really need to understand that Null is Master Mold, Mephisto is Galactus, and now Ultron and Gore are Dormammu. And look at that. The rewards are different. I got to go hide my camera here, but look at this. The rewards are completely different, right? Things drop in certain bosses that don't drop in other bosses. This is what needs to happen. So I do think that players are going to be initially excited for gore but then uh, they're going to be let down because they're like this is just like ultron and i can do a higher stage of ultron and i can beat him faster than gore i'm just going to go back to playing ultron and they're going to see very low adoption numbers for gore and they're going to feel like oh maybe we shouldn't be spending our resources and our, our effort uh, as devs into developing these world boss legends but cynic alex keeps saying that world boss legends are so fun they're missing the very crucial piece which is the rewards they don't have to always be better, but like you guys said in your own dev note a few months ago, they have to be different, right? These bosses feel different to fight, and Gore is sure as hell harder than Null, despite just stealing his weapon and calling it a day. Uh, but he doesn't feel different in terms of the, the reward you get for beating him. So why should players put in all the effort to see the Infinity Cones uh, stage? Is that why? To, to fight Mr. Clean with uh, baby powder on him? I'm not sure. Anyways, I, that's where I think there's going to be a little bit of disappointment and a little bit of uh, pushback from players, and I think rightfully so. And I do think the devs need to uh, address this sooner rather than later because World Boss is probably the most important game mode in Marvel Future Fight. So it's something that if they leave it for too long, it really leaves a lot of unrest with players and it upsets players for too long, and it can really come back to bite them in the ass. Uh, in a bad way like players players leaving players you know lower you know reducing their play time etc uh because it, it really kills motivation to, to to grind and to build up when you're basically just copying and pasting rewards for years right like it's not it's now been years right he came out in uh 2020 so it's it, we're coming up on two years since world boss legend was introduced it's it's time you guys stop copying and pasting rewards and actually make this feel make us make us feel like legends reward us like legends for taking down these legends it's very simple that's all i have to say about that uh, for now i'll make a separate video about it later anyways uh one thing i need to point out to you guys one one thing one big thing i want to point out to you guys is the april uh or sorry the august update known issues so there were two big issues when the update landed mephisto could not be time frozen by dr strange's um pattern mechanic in the third phase when he turns into that monster they have since fixed that. 
So I know some people in the comments are going to say, oh, Alex, you got to mention this. You got to mention that if you check the notice, they've already fixed that uh, Mephisto one. So the Mephisto one has been resolved. So there, there was a 40 megabyte patch that you have to download. But yeah, Mephisto has been fixed. What has not been fixed? There's two bugs that have not been fixed. The first one is that in GBR, and I believe in a couple of other game modes, the cooldown for characters does not reset when you switch them out. So what that means is if you're playing with a character and you just did their rotation and they have like five seconds left on their skills, like five second cooldown, and then they're gonna die, so you switch. When you switch back to that character who had five seconds on the cooldowns, all the skills are supposed to be at one second cooldown. They're not, they're still at five seconds. This makes, it doesn't make the game mode unplayable. It doesn't like destroy the gameplay, but it makes it a lot more annoying a lot more annoying it basically makes the game modes like pvp like timeline battle where all your skills are still on cooldown which is mad annoying so hopefully they fix that it's especially difficult for gbr because dormammu is such a high level of difficulty uh but yeah keep in mind that that has not been fixed yet so you have to play around that for now the other issue that has not been fixed this is one that i actually encourage you to take advantage of wink wink nudge nudge is that gold is not being used like they're not taking gold from you when you use the auto dismantle uh, when purchasing artifacts. So in yesterday's video, I uh, spent all my essence in the store uh, and I didn't realize that and, you know, whatever, that it's their fault for not doing it. But basically, when you turn the auto dismantle on and I suggest you do so, uh, it doesn't charge you gold. It's supposed to charge you gold when it converts it into essence. It what It's not charging you gold right now. So for those of you that have stockpiled essence, now might be a good time because you can basically get all of the recycling for free and it won't cost you any gold. And normally it does cost you gold. It's not like a, an insane amount of gold, depending on how much essence you have. Probably yesterday in, vi in the video for the 15,000 essence that I had, I probably saved myself at least accidentally saved myself a few million gold. Um, by doing that because otherwise I would have had to pay the gold manually right because what I'm say saying is that right now when you do the when you do the um, when you're opening chests and you do the auto dismantle it's not charging you gold as you can see here normally this costs that's 8,000 gold right that costs 10,000 gold that adds up over time if you're doing enough essence so yeah I don't know if y'all want to sort of abuse this bug but they have acknowledged the bug and they have acknowledged that they're gonna fix it during the next update. We don't know when the next update is going to be, but yeah, just keep that in mind uh, and do with that information what you will, wink. Last but not least, I do wanna leave you guys on a positive note. So we're gonna talk about the event quest reward. So this is the pre-update event quest shop. And in order to illustrate how much better this shop is than last time, I will show you the shop from two updates ago. So two updates ago, we had the Avengers update with tier four Iron Man. That was when they first introduced tier three materials into the shop. And they introduced it at 20 essence and 20 Titan component packs and 15 cosmic cube fragments. And you could trade them in for these various amounts. And they introduced a couple of other things. That's all well and good. That's cool. However, it's way better now. So now they reduced the price of the Titan record selector by 90 tokens, which is awesome. They also more than doubled. They actually almost tripled the amount of CCF. So you can get 80 CCF for free if you collect all of the pre-update event tokens. So you can get eight, almost 100 CCF for free extra every month. This is huge for new players, and I highly recommend that new players select the CCF, the Cosmic Cube Fragments, because it's so difficult to farm CCF until you have World Boss Legend unlocked and you have that guaranteed CCF. But you can also get 100 uh, Dimension Dust, which is actually supposed to be Essence of Dimension. It's a typo. You could get 100 Titan Component Packs. You could get 100 Titan Component Packs and still have leftover tokens. So this shop is way better than it was before. They reduced the price of the four-star rank up ticket. They more than doubled the bios from 20 to 50. They did a whole bunch of stuff. I really like this change. I don't know why the devs don't tell us this change because it's such a good thing and the players would be really happy. They should really try to highlight their positive changes and their reward changes more when they do forum posts. It seems like they're they're pretty bad at that and uh, I don't know why. I mean, it, it makes me, it gives me more work, more content, which is nice, but it, it also uh, means that fewer players know that they're actually buffing rewards, which 
Everyone should know that, right? Whenever you buff rewards in a mobile game, everyone should know that because that's a main reason why people play. So anyways, that's the update. A lot of good, some bad, a bit to be worried about. Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button. I'll be live soon on Twitch, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.